Hey everybody, it's the Epistemologers here. We're just uh, chatting about extraterrestrials. And we were talking about this for quite a while um, the other day. The main thing is, is that um, I think QAnon brought up extraterrestrials at least lightly um, in saying that that we're not alone and just consider the vastness of space. Which got and I think that that got everybody in a that? tizzy. Everyone was excited. <laughs> excited or, or nervous because you can ride the QAnon train for a little bit, but the moment Q gets into extraterrestrials, some of us is, are going to get off the train. And that's going to be true of any movement. <laughs> Not every movement is going to align with what people believe. So you can get on the the sort of Trump train for a bit until you get off at QAnon. Or if you can keep riding the QAnon train, you can uh, maybe find your, yourself getting off at the extraterrestrial stop. <laughs> and then if you keep riding that for a while, maybe you'll, you'll decide that Pleiadians aren't your thing and you get off there. <laughs> and who knows really how far that train will go. Or um, well, and and really, when we're talking about a train, we don't mean just one train. It's more like no. the network of strands that are all interconnected. But eventually, you're oh, yeah. you're gonna run into something that doesn't necessarily agree with you. Yeah, well, and that's okay. We're free to to change trains whenever we want, or yeah. just start up our own train. So. Um, but we wanted to get a little bit into the extraterrestrial thing because we do have some opinions largely shaped by our understanding of how knowledge works and how knowledge is built. So I wanted to just, as, at least as quickly as I can, get through a few features that I I think are kind of important into the study of extraterrestrials. Um, even though I'm not really like we, we me, yeah. I'm not an expert, really. Neither of us are. But we pay extraterrestrials or secret technology or anything like that. But we pay attention to it. It's something that that interests us as a, a you know, a duo. Yeah, we do for talk sure. about and it a lot. Pretty open-minded in a sense that you know, it the military has got to be keep got to be working on secret technology, has been for a long time. There's a lot we don't know. It it's just stands to reason. There's also um, the possibility of extraterrestrials just makes sense to me, uh, makes sense to you, I think, just because we are people here on Earth. We know we exist. People can exist elsewhere. Um, if they exist here, they can exist somewhere else. So people, I think, are probably littered throughout the universe and um, of different shapes and sizes and and they may yeah, have, and, and it's certainly, at least with our philosophy, anything that can be physically done can be done, done by people. So, you know, there, there might be a way that we don't quite fully understand of either of uh, transporting ourselves vast dis distances. All right. Yeah. So if. If something, if we can see something exists or observe something um, being done, then knowledge can be leveraged to reproduce it, yes. to make it happen. Um, that means that if you see a star somewhere out there, then knowledge could be leveraged to create a star. Um, if you see a person, then knowledge can be leveraged to create a person and so on. Um, there's, well, there's so many things that knowledge can unlock. Um, pretty much everything. The, the universe or the laws of physics as they are do not prohibit knowledge from solving any problem. So if you really, if you want to make something happen, then... Um, pretty much everything in the universe can be, you know, as long as it happens somewhere, knowledge can be made to get it to happen here or wherever, somewhere. So that that's true in principle. So really, this, there isn't a lot of limit limitations to what knowledge can unlock. So anybody out there, 
uh, you know, some civilization existing for millions of years without really any hiccup in their knowledge building process could know quite a bit about how to take control and uh, of maybe a, a, an entire galaxy, um, maybe dominate huge portions of the universe. Um, and we're just sitting here because we were set way back by the cataclysm that happened about 11,000 years ago. So we're all been kind of in the dark for a long time and uh, we've been taken advantage of by people in our midst. And um, we have this long running cult of uh, people, people who like know, to take advantage that, of people. People who like, yeah, but they're, it's ancient. It's uh, stems from Phoenicia, Babylon, um, wherever else, uh, Canaan. There's Canaan. a lot of, um, yeah, Canaan. There's, oh, ancient Egypt. Um, a lot of amalgamations of different ancient mythologies uh, kind of put together into a, uh, a long running um, religion that essentially uh, worships uh, an uh, um, unknown god, something that cannot be um, um, described or named because that would remove its power. Um, this goes back to Amun-Ra. Um, Amun was an aspect of Ra that um, was a uh, got or derived its power from its name and it would keep that secret and there's a myth about isis seeking his name only to you know remove his power once she found it um so this cult is ancient and it uh, has a time-tested formula for acquiring power and basically abusing it doing doing the things that we uh have our better judgment telling us not to do. Uh, so uh, they, they do that. It's, it's sort of able to self replicate because they invasively um, damage people's ability to reason in certain areas by through compartmentalization. Um, and uh, they have rituals just for doing that kind of thing. Um, they kind of let abuse beget abuse and it's gotten out of hand. So part of the, the big secret um, is the way the universe works. They don't really want you to know uh, how they work, how, uh, how to, to build knowledge. They don't, they don't want their empire collapsing. Uh, they, they do what they can to, to protect it. Um, part of it means... Um, preventing us from having access to technology that would give us free energy, uh, free transportation anywhere around the world uh, very quickly. Um, it would just be like their little flock of sheep would just get out of hand. So they try to keep us all corralled. Imagine, imagine that you have the choice between being a homeless or destitute person in this era or being a king in the medieval era which one would you rather be <laughs> and, are you asking me well no I, it's a rhetorical <laughs> question but uh oh, okay. <laughs> i think it's kind of the choice that 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 people who want to stagnate uh for their own benefit kind of make yeah 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 is that is that and and I'm and there is the there is this thought experiment and I've kind of taken it to a different extreme because being middle class is by far better than being uh, a king in in the medieval era. However, oh yeah, lifestyle wise, yeah. However, being uh, destitute, I don't think is much better. Is way, probably no. much much worse. <laughs> and I think that's yeah. kind of the the relation that they have or the reason why why stagnation because i i i like that thought experiment and i think that this is uh 
So, so people might ask why why do people want to stagnate uh, progress? Why do people want to stifle progress or hold back these technologies? And if you can be king and you can you know sort of rule over everyone else, then why would you want to give that up? Yeah, it's like they want to be top dog on the pile of dogs. Yeah. And it's not the greatest place to be. <laughs> but but it might be better than all the other dogs position. And there might be a level of uh you know sort of training uh, uh the idea of enjoying sadistic sadism, right? Enjoying suffering as long as you're on top and they are below you. Um, I think it was I think it was Podesta that said something along the lines of, "I'd rather be the person with a fork than the one on the table." Is that what he said? Yeah. Well, there was a there was a painting of that. Um, oh yeah. Some creepy people hovering over a guy on a table, and someone asked him what the painting meant, and Podesta inked with the sparkle in his eye or something, and he said, "Well, it's better to be the guy with the fork." Yeah. Okay. And it, it's like, <laughs> well, you know, maybe we don't have to be, No, maybe no one has to be on the table. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, that's not something that jives well with their worldview, so we'll not go there. <laughs> well, and but so... But I, 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 I think it's possible that all boats can rise. I, I don't think it makes any sense to really just put all our resources into one boat just for the benefit of one person. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I think that's kind of the I I don't see any reason or know of any anything and that would be a great comment. If someone can explain to us a reason for not for boat not all boats to rise or how that could how that could happen. If we're equipped with the right uh knowledge, all boats can reasonably rise without any of them falling without any of them being terrible for instance going back to the king and the destitute person i would much rather be a destitute destitute person now than one in the in the middle ages yeah and so well that makes sense right of course it does but that's an example the middle ages everyone has risen everyone has uh, rose. The only difference is the kings might have not been as good as the middle class. Uh, they're just better than the destitute. They're living better than the destitute here. Yeah, and if the, the kings really had their way, they would probably just preserve their empire perfectly. Yes. Uh, just preserve their power perfectly. Right. Forever, and we wouldn't really have gotten any better. No. Um you know, because that's the cost of preserving their empire is stagnation. And stagnation is one of the, I think it's the biggest evil um, because problems aren't bad. We can solve them. Yeah. It, the, the, the biggest evil is, is the biggest, the biggest problem itself is the, the, um, the need to solve problems, including that one. Yeah. So, and that's what stagnation is. The biggest problem is so the inability the last... to solve problems. Yeah. 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 I mean, if we have no ability to solve problems for whatever reason, whether it's self-imposed or, you know, politically imposed or for whatever reason, then we're in trouble because there is essentially some problem on its way that will will wipe us out. And if we can't solve it in time, we're finished. Yep. It's only a matter of time. Yep. Because problems are inevitable, and some of them are bigger than others. So as long so, as we work on solving bigger and better problems, and as long as we build the knowledge, build knowledge as fast as we can, we should be doing pretty good. We should be doing all right. Yeah, right. But we have this this empire that that is basically quarantined us from the rest of the universe and it looks like um 
it looks like that's that's happened because they've um because they it would get out of hand too fast if we if we knew more about how the universe works you know how it's what's out there if we knew more about that it, it, the the cat would be out of the bag and they wouldn't be able to to, to rein their 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 empire back in um so we're in a sort of spot where it looks like uh their reign is either shifting over to a new one a new regime um or um falling apart it's just falling apart entirely and now and, and I, we're, we're not quite certain on which it which it is people seem to think that q is uh you know is sort of breaking it apart but both scenarios are viable both of them yeah. make sense we need more constraint and that's going to come with time because q can't explain yeah. the strategy or it loses its 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 effectiveness eff efficacy yeah so so we're going to wait you know like it it's possible that it could go either way and you know the new regime could certainly um take advantage of how they uh, crushed the old regime and uh, really put in infrastructure that helps us all. Yep. I actually expect that personally. But yeah. and, and, and well, until we're there, and you it, think, it can be constrained better. I mean, there's also the possibility that it helps us all, but ultimately it will stagnate again. That they will allow some yeah, more always. progress, yeah. but it will stagnate. Yeah, the threat of stagnation is always there. Yeah. And it's an individual decision yeah. to progress or not. So it's always there. So we're going to have to do something about it on an individual basis and a community basis consistently from here on out. Hmm. So I think I may have gotten to everything that I wanted to. Is there anything you wanted to say? I, I just like the interaction. All right. Well, awesome. Uh, thanks for listening, everyone. We, uh, as usual, like to hear your opinions as long as they're coupled with explanations for your opinions. <laughs> we do like to hear um, uh, to, to hear counter opinions as well, uh, as long as we can follow you through your thinking. So basically, show your work if you if you want to let us know. Uh, that is awesome. Yes. Uh, we want to be basically approachable. Um, so you're welcome to counter our, our opinions for any reason. We, we won't blame you. <laughs> no, we won't blame you. <laughs> we are potentially wrong about pretty much anything. So if and you can everybody. counter us, uh, we appreciate the, the, the opportunity to work out a better explanation collaboratively. So feel free. Also, sub subscribe, like. Yeah, all uh, those things that, channel, that people so want. Whatever. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for listening.